So we're going to talk today about the factory design pattern, and there's some confusion sometimes from this similar sounding pattern called static factory methods, which is what we just had our quiz on. But these two things are completely different. We do need to learn both of them. And I'm going to talk about this factory design pattern here now today. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a video game together. And this video game is going to make use of the classes that you wrote yesterday for homework. So we have this alien class. And we have these four types of aliens that we said we were going to build. And there was like a rat alien. And there was a monkey alien. And there was a squid alien. And who remembers the fourth one? I don't remember. What was it? Yes. Tiger. Uh, tiger alien. Tiger alien. Okay. Tiger alien. All right. And these all, of course, inherit from alien. And what we're going to do is we're going to assume that there is this giant video game being built by a company, and you are one programmer at this company, but you might think there might be like 100 people working on this game at the same time. Hundred, and you're just one of them. And what you're going to do, let's say that each of these, let's say that alien up here has some sort of generic attack method defined, and then each of these alien subtypes is supposed to override the attack method, and they each deliver a different amount of damage. Maybe, maybe this one delivers a random amount of damage. This one maybe delivers five points of damage. Maybe this one delivers ten. You get the idea, right? So we're going to have this method here, and we're going to override that attack method here in each of these. Now we're going to have this game class right here. And this is going to contain our video game. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a bunch of these randomly, a bunch of these aliens randomly, put them in an array or array list, and then cycle through them and give each of them a chance to attack. That's the idea. Now, I want you to imagine that you're one of the people who's responsible for this piece of software right here. And so part of what you have to do when the game first starts up in the constructor for the game, you have to create an array of these alien objects and populate the array. And we want to assemble this list randomly. So maybe our game has 10 aliens that do the attacking. And each game is different, so we're going to use random number generation to determine how many rats do we have, how many monkeys, how many squids, and how many tigers. That's the idea. And I think you did that for your homework last night, yes? So now I want you to imagine that this game is complicated and that instead of just you, there might be seven or eight other developers out there that are also working on this game that similarly, at some point in their code, need to randomly create one of these aliens. Got that? So imagine you have your code, and your code featured an enum, and what else? A switch statement, right? And imagine that their code, each of their code, has similar enum and switch statement. So now you have, out of the 100 people working on this game, maybe there's seven or eight that are in need of creating these random aliens, and they each have this code inside them that basically selects an alien at random and creates selects a type at random and then creates that type of alien. And what I want to know is, is this a good idea or a bad idea? And if it's a bad idea, why is it bad and how should we fix it? I would like you to take a minute now and discuss with the person next to you, what are the good things and bad things about the scenario that Mr. Sarkar just described and what would be a better way to approach this? So one of the students is asking, will the game ever have a generic alien? And when we build the alien, when we build the video game today, we're going to explicitly make it impossible to create a generic alien. How will we do that? Yes, sir. That's why I was thinking, yeah, interface, right? No. Huh. That would be one way to do it. We're going to do it a slightly different way. Yeah, Mr. Schulson? Abstract. We're going to make this abstract. The reason we don't want to use interface, sir, is I'm going to show you we're going to actually put some pieces of code in here that can be shared by all these other aliens. If we made this a pure interface, we wouldn't be able to do that. So in this case, I think it's better to use an abstract class instead of an interface. But we'll get to that when we go next door. OK, I would like to hear from somebody about whether it's a good idea or a bad idea to have all these different people generating their aliens whenever they need them. Who wants to take a whack at it? Mr. F. Sorry, thank you for volunteering, sir. 
Can you tell me, sir, what would be good or bad about having seven or eight people generating these aliens as they need them? Um, it's a lot of memory. Uh, yes, that's true. There, it does use more memory, yes. Uh, think about the development of the game, sir, as new alien types are being created, old ones are being retired and not used any longer. What are the dangers? Can you think of something? Um, okay. So imagine that someone who owns this alien class or owns these classes here, all of a sudden, let's say they decide, you know, that this rat alien has not been very popular this year. Let's get rid of this rat alien. Would the code break now in each person's, in each person's version of the switch statement? Yeah. It would, yes? Now that's not so bad because there at least the switch statement would tell you there's no such thing as a rat alien, so it wouldn't compile and you get a chance to fix it. What would happen if I added a new alien type? Ben, what would happen? There wouldn't be any compiler errors. You would just be missing out on one of the aliens. Right. There wouldn't be a compiler error. You might just be missing out on one of the aliens. Every person would have to know that this new alien type has been created and that they would need to modify their switch statement to add that new type of alien. And you can see that this would be a huge problem. Imagine it's a giant game. It lives for several years. It evolves. It's wildly popular. It's, you know, it. it they add like seven different kinds of aliens, you'd have all these people having to change their switch statements to keep up. We don't want to write code like that. What we really want to do is write the code in such a way that if the person who owns these classes adds or deletes aliens, the rest of the code just keeps working. So now my question to you is, can anyone think of an alternative to each of these people adding their own aliens? Anyone? The same method if it was in the alien class. Okay, yeah. if they were in the alien class, that would be true, but the alien, we don't really want the alien to know about the subtypes. The alien it needs to only have the generic alien code. But I think you've got the general idea. We need to centralize the creation of these aliens. You see that, right? So instead of everybody writing their own separate code, nearly identical with an enum and a switch statement, what we want to do is we want to create another class over here, alien factory. alien factory. Try to understand what's happening now. We're building a new resource that's highly associated with these classes, typically owned by the same person or group of people that own these classes. And what we want to do is provide this resource to any user who wants to create a random alien all they do now is create an alien factory and say, give me an alien. They don't know how many different types of aliens. I'll take your question later. They don't know how many different types of aliens there are. They don't even know what kind of alien they're getting. All they have to do is say alien factory AF equals new alien factory. And then it says AF dot get alien. And it gives you an alien. And then you can use it in the game. Now here's the beauty of this approach. Once I centralize this, how many people have to keep track of how many different aliens there are, which ones are going to be popular this year, which ones have gone out of favor? Ms. Mila? One. Only one. So this is a common technique that's used when you have a structure like this that's going to evolve over time. You don't want to burden your users with having to create types and subtypes. They don't know this year what flavors are in, what flavors are out. You want to centralize the creation of these objects. Do you have a question? Uh, yeah, so would this still, um, for the three part structure that you were talking about earlier, uh, would this be part of the same section in the model or is it part of the? Three part structure, structure, the MVC model? Yeah. This would still be part of the model. Mm -hmm. It's still part of the model. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go next door and we're going to rebuild the code that you wrote yesterday, except this time, we're going to create a central alien factory. I'm going to walk you through building this game from scratch. We're going to build an alien factory. And then, here's the really weird part. I'm going to build a lousy alien factory first. And then I'm going to ask for your advice on how to make it better. And then we'll build a better alien factory. What will we call the better alien factory? Better alien factory. That is right. It's called better alien factory. Let's go next door now and build a video game together. And I think I finally have my answer here. All right. 
So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a brand new project on uh, IntelliJ. So let's do that. And we're going to call this the uh, alien project. Uh, yes, it's going to be a different one than what you already have. If you called your other one alien project, call this better alien project or something like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to build these uh, classes from the ground up because there's just a lot of things that I'm going to try to teach you in this one project. And I don't think I'm going to finish today, but that's OK. Uh, and I realize it's a Friday, but uh, what can you do? Uh, so let's create a class called alien. And uh, the first thing we want to do here is we want to make sure that no one actually creates an alien. We, we want that to be too generic. We, we want to force the user to create to create a subtype of alien, like a tiger alien or a squid alien, something like that. And I think someone has already mentioned today that the way to do that is to make the class abstract. Uh, so let's do that. And what we want to do here is we want to, let's see here. We want to, first of all, um, uh, write a simple, some simple code that can be used for uh, multiple, uh, multiple alien types. And um, I'm just trying to get my uh, act together here. One second. Hold on. Okay, here we go. And what we want to say here is that every subtype is required to have an attack method. So we're going to say uh, int attack. And this int is here because it's going to return it's going to return the amount of damage that that particular alien does when it attacks. And what I want to know is, uh, how do I force the subtypes to write this method? Uh, Mr. Scholson, sir, how do I force the subtypes to write their attack method? You know, so make this abstract. So we're going to make this abstract also like that. And that will force each of the subtypes that are concrete to to write their attack method. If they don't write it, they'll actually get a compiler error, which is what we want. And uh, actually for now, let's just leave it just like that. That's all we're going to have. And at this point, you might be thinking that maybe maybe Ben was right. Maybe we should have made this an interface, but I'm gonna add some code to this later. And that's why it's gonna be better as an ABC. ABC means abstract base class. So now we have the alien set up. Let's now add the other four types of aliens. So we're going to come over here and say new Java class. And the first one is going to be the tiger alien. And this tiger alien is going to um, extend alien like that. And we have to make sure that we write the at override public um, in attack, right? We have to write the attack method. And let's say that the tiger alien uh, return, uh, let's say it does 10 points of damage. Okay, so that the tiger alien will do 10 points of damage all the time. And uh, we also need to have a two string. So let's go at override uh, public void, uh, sorry, string two string. And let's say that this one returns uh, tiger alien like that. So that will be the tiger alien. What I'd like you to do now is go ahead and do the exact same thing for the other three types of aliens. Give them each a different amount of attacking uh, capability. Okay, so uh, we have our tiger alien. Let's go and add a uh, squid alien, I think it was. All right, are we all good? All right, so one thing I want to do now is I want to... Uh, in my test code, the test code in this case, uh, we will call um, uh, we'll call it alien tester, I guess. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's call it the game method, you know, the game class. Let's create a game class. So here's the, uh, we'll call it alien game, alien game here. And what we'll do in here is we'll put the main method in here. Yes, sir. So here we'll go. Um, We'll say alien game ag equals new alien game and we'll say uh, ag.play that will sort of fire up the game engine and get it started and now we have to write some methods here so one thing we have to write is a constructor so we'll go public alien game like this we'll get to this in a second 
And then we also have to write this play method. So we'll go uh, public void play, and we'll have to write some stuff for that. So I'm just fleshing out the skeleton of our game here. And um, let's do this. Let's, in our game, let's create uh, some aliens and put them in a list. So maybe we'll call the list a list of attackers. So we'll go, uh, we'll go alien array uh, attackers uh, like that. And then in the array, we'll say, uh, and we'll say, we'll define a constant as to how many attackers there should be. So we'll say uh, private final int uh, how many equals uh, 10 will be a good number. So we'll say that we'll, our, our game will initially have 10 attackers, but by changing this number, we could easily change the number of attackers we're going to have in our game. Yeah. Yes, because the so how how would you do it then? You you get, but because there was not a specific. Oh oh okay. No one no one remembers. Well, I'm just, just pick like five. Ten. Okay 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 um. So I want to build a game in such a way that uh, if the uh, the boss comes and says, okay, instead of using 10 attackers, use 25, I want to be able to go in here and just change this to 25, and then the game will run with 25 attackers instead of 10. So the, the reason why I want to put final here is I want to indicate to the reader that this number is never going to change. And if this variable ever gets put on the right side of an assignment, sorry, on the left side of an assignment statement, the compiler is going to catch that and warn me that I'm doing something wrong. Once you create the attackers array, that will the length of that can't change either. Right, that's true. So so that, that doesn't mean that I shouldn't define the length of it here as a constant so I can easily name it and change it later. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say attackers equals new alien. How many like that? And then what I would need to do here is I need to write some code to populate the attackers. And um, right now I'm going to ignore that for a second and just uh, put one in there. So I'll go attackers sub zero equals new. I'll put a monkey alien in here for now, just, just kind of test it out. And uh, what I'll do next is I will print the, uh, uh, I will print attackers sub zero, to show that it's creating the monkey alien and that everything is working. And here, uh, we'll write this later, we'll write that later. Okay, so basically we've have this pretty much set up now. Um, can someone just touch the panel uh, for me? Okay, thank you. Uh, so let's run this and see uh, how good a job we've done so far. Okay, and there is the monkey alien that was created right here. So we, we kind of have it sort of going here. Now, before we get any further, even though this is not really core to our lesson, uh, do you notice that each of these alien types has their own two string? You see this? The alien, the tiger alien has a two string. The, the oops, I think I got, yeah, the, the squid alien has a slightly different, but you see they're all very, very similar, right? So when you get patterns like this, where each subclass has extremely similar code, the first thought that should go through your head is, maybe I can take this code and bring it up to the parent class so that each subtype doesn't have to write essentially the same code over and over. And so I'm going to show you a trick now that we did not see in computer science A, and it's a pretty cool trick where instead of writing these individual two strings, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go up here to the alien class 
And I'm going to move the two string up here. So to do that, I'm going to go at override public string two string. And this is some code that you've never seen before. Return this dot get class dot get simple name. And let's talk about this for a second. So what's happening here is I'm asking the Java virtual uh, Java runtime engine, the Java virtual machine, to tell me what is the name of the class and, and then get me its simple name. Simple name simply means that if it's a monkey alien, it's going to just say monkey alien. It's not going to say alien dot monkey alien or anything like that, just the, just the last part. And you can see here that even though this code is sitting in the parent class, if a monkey alien runs this and inherits it, it will know to print monkey alien for this monkey alien and squid alien for squid alien. So what's going to happen now is that we no longer need these two strings in our individual classes. So that's kind of cool. So we can now get rid of these. And now I can still run this. So remember right now I created a single monkey alien. Inside the monkey alien, there's no two string. I moved the two string to the alien class, but it's still gonna say monkey alien because it knows it's a monkey alien. So let's run this. And look, it still says monkey alien. How cool is that? So that's really nice because now we've managed to not have to burden each of the subtypes for having a near identical two string. We can just move the two string into the parent class and that's really good. So uh, let's see if we're missing anything else here. Um, what we're gonna do now is we're going to go ahead and build our alien factory. And so that's gonna be another class. And so I'm going to, yes, sir. Here, I'm going to build a new class. I'm going to call it Alien Factory. This Alien Factory code is going to be extremely similar to the code you wrote last night. Extremely similar. So let's build this together. Uh, first thing we need to do is we need to have an enum. We can make it private or public. It doesn't really matter. Enum types. And this will keep track of how many different types of aliens we have. And we have our squid alien. We have our monkey alien, we have our uh, tiger alien, and we have our rat alien, uh, uh, alien. And we have to make sure that these are spelled exactly the same as the class names. And this will be the only place where we track the enums here. So the person who is adding or deleting aliens in the alien files, this is the only enum they're going to need to change. And now we're going to create this method called getAlien. And this will be the main work product of this class. And anytime a user needs to create an alien, they're going to just create an alien factory and call the getAlien method. And this thing will return an alien to them. And if we have seven or eight users that need aliens, they'll all use this code. So that's very good. And so what we'll do here is we'll go uh, alien, alien equals null. That's just to get started. We're just gonna uh, put our variable in there and we're gonna eventually return that alien. So at the end of this method, we're gonna say return alien. That's gonna be the, the final product. And now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna write some bad code and then I'm gonna ask you to fix it for me, you and your partner, okay? So I'm gonna say uh, int, how many types equals four? Okay, and then I'm gonna say uh, int random index equals math.random. And I'm gonna multiply by how many types. And I'm gonna turn this into an integer like that. <laughs> and then I'm going to use that uh, to uh, generate a, a different type of alien each time. So I'm going to say switch, um, switch uh, random index. And I'm going to say I'm going to say if it's a zero, 
then we're going to make a uh, uh, alien equals new squid alien like that. And I'm going to say break. I'm going to say, I'm sorry, did I make a mistake here, sir? Oh, sorry, case. I forgot the keyword case. Thank you, sir. And then I'm going to do this again for the other alien types. Uh, I think that's all I should need. One, two, and three. And this one will be for the monkey. And this one will be for the tiger. And this one will be for the rat. And just in case any funny business happens, even though it really shouldn't, let's just put a default in here and just in case. And we'll just maybe uh, say uh, here, say bad alien. And look, I think this is a pretty serious problem. So we're going to shut the game down. So to do that, we go system exit one. And you just have to put in a non-zero value here to indicate to the caller that something bad happened. And uh, I think that's basically it for that. And then we're, we're, by the time we get down here, if nothing bad has happened, we're going to return whatever alien type we created there. So let's look at this for a second and then kind of decide, discuss with your partner what's ugly here and how should we fix it. Please take a minute now to try and figure out how to rewrite this code properly. Magic number, just say no. I like it. I like it. Magic number, just say no. Okay, so what should be bothering you right now is this four. And so you might be thinking to yourself, oh, you know what? Maybe I'll do this. Maybe I'll go uh, private. Uh, how many? Uh, private int. How many types equals, equals four? And then put this... Uh, Put this how many types here, but you know what? That, that's not much better. That's, that's not much better. It's slightly better, but it's not really much better. So I, I need a much better solution than that. Uh, who can tell me what's gone wrong and how to fix it? Mr. Schalson, what do you, oh, sorry, Mr. Ben, what do you think, sir? Okay, so what I need to do here is I need to ask the enum, how many elements do you have? And the easiest way to do that is to turn it into an array and then ask the array, how many elements do you have? So as Ben has suggested, instead of doing this, which is not a good idea, what we want to do here is we want to first turn it into an array like that and then ask the array, how long are you, like that. So that's a much better solution. And now what we want to do is uh, instead of switching on these numbers, we would like to switch on the actual enum types. So what we'd like to do here is say uh, uh, switch uh, like uh, squid alien. And then over here, we'd like to switch on the uh, monkey alien. And we need to switch here on the tiger alien. Now, now we're protecting ourselves by using the type names, rat alien. And I just need to know, how do I change this code a little bit so that now I can switch on these instead of, instead of having to switch on, uh, on the numbers? So I need to, this right now you can see it's creating some errors. I need you to go and fix this now in your code and get it to work. And I'll meet you back here in two minutes. I'll give you a hint. I'm going to replace this with a new variable called T. And now how do I set T here? Uh, what is what is the type on T and how do I set T? Uh, that's my question. That's a, that's a pretty big hint right there. And now, sir, the last question I have is what should be the type on T? So look what I've done here. I've taken the or I've taken the enum. I've turned it into an array, and I'm using this random number gener that I've generated to randomly index into that array and grab one of these enum types and put it into this type variable T. And then I'm switching on that variable. Okay, so now we have to go back to our alien factory here and we have to return the alien, which is what we're doing right here. And I think we're pretty much almost done with our alien factory. 
let's go back to our game engine. And here, now before, just for test purposes, I had just created one alien. But now what I want to do is I want to populate the entire array by using this new alien factory that I've created. So to do that, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to go alien factory, AF equals new alien factory. I would like you to write a loop right here to populate this array using the get alien method from alien factory. Please write that loop now for me. So use a loop to run how many times, see, in this case it's 10, but you can use how many as a, ver as a constant to populate this array and fill it with random aliens. Okay. And just for good measure, let's just for debug purposes, print out whichever alien we happen to get. So we'll know that it's working and it's random each time. And in this play method, what we're going to do is we're just going to run through the aliens and have them attack us. So we're going to do a similar loop like that. And uh, let's say that uh, int damage equals that. And then let's print the damage to show that the aliens are attacking us. OK? So look what's happening here. In the constructor for the game, I'm randomly populating it with 10 aliens. And then when we play the game, I'm going to go through each of the aliens and give them each a chance to attack us. And each time they do some damage, we're going to print how much damage each of the aliens is doing. Now, let's run this game and see how it goes. OK. So on this particular run, we got a rat alien, a squid alien, a monkey, two tigers, another monkey, a rat, and then two monkeys and a squid. And you can see here is the attack pattern that was generated in the game. If I was to run the game again, you'll see I'll get a completely different pattern, which of course is the whole idea. So let's do that now. And this time I ran it, you can see I started off with three tigers, a rat, a monkey, two more rats, et cetera, and a completely different attack pattern. So you can see that's going well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make the game slightly more sophisticated. And I'm going to say that for the uh, for the rat alien, uh, let's switch the attack mode. Instead of returning a fixed damage of 20, I want it to be a random damage between 0 and 9, zero, a random number between 0 and 9. So I want you to change the attack profile so that it, it generates a random integer in the range 0 to 9 inclusive. OK, Ms. Cognetti, I want to generate a number between one, 0 and 9 inclusive. How do I do that? And that will give us what we want. And that way, it'll generate a different number each time between 0 and 9. This is the way that we've always generated random numbers in the CSA. I'm going to show you a slightly better way now, which is much cleaner. When you want integers, you can use this random class that is available to you. Uh, you can go like this. You can go random r equals new random now we haven't seen this before i don't think uh you can uh have it uh, automatically alt enter it will uh, bring in the uh the alt enter here we go there's the uh, random class that's brought in there and now instead of doing it like this you can just go r dot next int and just give it the upper bound it's not going to include the 10 it's going to generate a number between zero and nine so that is uh, a better, another way to do it, and it's just cleaner. It's clean. The, the math that random is good for decimal numbers. This is clean for integers. So that's another tiny little lesson within the lesson. So now let's uh, let's run this again and see uh, if it's still working. If we've broken anything, so let's go back to the game and let's run the game. And it looks like it's still working. And you can see here that the fourth, the third number was the rat alien. You can see I got a weird eight number, which was not one of the numbers that I had put in for the other alien. So it's generating a random number here. You can see it's working. So that's pretty cool. We've got a game that's coming together very nicely. Uh, and now, before I end today, I want to show you one more thing.
let's look at this alien factory and let's look at it together and um, this get alien method is, is quite good. There's just one piece of ugliness left. Can someone tell me what is the piece of ugliness here? Yes, sir. Uh, no, that's a very common thing, unfortunately. Um, there's a piece of code here that's going to need to get updated every time we add a new alien. Now, obviously, we have to update the enum, but what else are we going to have to update in here? Yes, sir. The switch statement. And this is the crux of today's lesson. I'm going to show you how to get rid of the switch statement. Okay. Now, this is really cool because now the only thing you'll have to change is the enum. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment out the switch statement for now because we're not going to need it. And uh, I just want to show you in comparison to what the two look like. And this is what we're going to write instead now. We're going to write... Uh, and that, that's, that's one heck of a line of code there. And the first thing I need you to know is you don't have to memorize that. Okay, if I ever ask you that on a quiz, I'm going to give you this line of code. I'm just going to give it to you because I can't expect you to memorize that. But I need to go through here and tell you what's happening and why this is a fantastic line of code that basically gets rid of the switch statement. It gets rid of the maintenance. Okay, now we only have to keep track. of. We can just add or delete aliens here at will, and this code will keep working. Basically, what's happening here is that this thing, I think you will agree, is one of these enum types. See that, right? It's an enum type. And what I'm doing basically with that enum type is I'm calling this thing to get a string version of that type. This is where I convert it to a string. So here in the part that I've highlighted, I'm taking the enum and I'm converting it to a string. And then I'm taking that string and converting it to a class. And I'm taking the class and I'm calling a constructor in this funky way and creating a new object of that class. So for example, if this T happens to be squid alien, this two string will be the string version of squid alien. And then I'm going to go to that squid alien class, which is written now written as a string, convert it to a class, and then to create an object of that class. Yes. So you could still screw this up and maybe you misspell one of these and it doesn't match the um, the uh, the classes. And that's one of the reasons why we have to have this exception here, which so the, so the runtime engine will spot if you ever misspell uh, one of these enums or, or something like that. Uh, was there another question, Mr. F? Sorry, same question. OK, now uh, I have a secret to share with you. Uh, oh, first of all, let's try this out. And you can see it still works. How cool is that? Notice now I've gotten rid of all the switch statements. And that's a good thing. Now, what Ms. Teleska mentioned is still the one last remaining weakness in our alien factory. And she mentioned, for example, that if you misspell one of these, these have to track the types exactly. Last year, I had done some research and found some code that would actually get rid of the enum as well. That at runtime, we could ask the alien class, what are your subtypes? Unfortunately, I've lost that code and I can't find it. It's very embarrassing. Uh, it was super complicated anyway. So for a high school class, I'm going to declare victory right here. But if you're really interested, do the research and I'll give you one point of extra credit if you can find what I lost last year how to get rid of this enum altogether and to have code in here basically that asks in runtime that asks the alien class what are all your various subtypes and puts them in a list and then uses them here so that's a little extra credit project for you if you feel like it and then we'll share it with the class i, I literally spent an hour yesterday trying to trace down i thought i had put it somewhere it wasn't there i've lost the code okay so that's our little lesson for you today and you can see now we should change this to say better alien factory. I should have done that. Uh, let's do that right now. We're going to call this better, better alien factory. And now we're going to, in this alien game, we're going to say better. I should have refactored better alien factory here and here. 
And the reason it's better is that we have removed all the switch statements. Oh, now this is messed up. See that? Okay. Anyway, so that is basically our lesson for today. There's 10 minutes left. 